a FabLab Amersfoort. Uh, we will have uh, two presentations. First about the laser cutter, and uh, Peter will also uh, touch the fizzy cut tool. Um, and after that we will uh, go uh, to the Bitcoin uh, automated uh, teller machine. Uh, please realize that uh, we got the, uh, this space uh, for nothing, but uh, donations are uh, very uh, welcome. So uh, bear that in mind. So we are, uh, the FAPLAB uh, Amersfoort, uh, very thankful for that. Peter will now uh, touch the FAPLAB Amersfoort with the laser cutter. Okay, so, so welcome in the FAPLAB Amersfoort. Um, um, to give a bit of an intro on, on FAPLOPS um, in, in general, um, it was started in, in uh, MIT in, uh, in America um, at the center of bits and atoms to, to have a um, like a application uh, laboratory. Um, and it, it, it grew into a, a huge network. Um, yeah, so these are all uh, fab labs, um, and and what they have in common, for example, is is the machines. So every fab lab has a laser cutter, a CNC mill, and um, a final cutter. So that's that machine. Um, um, And yeah, usually they have a 2D print, but that's actually not one of the requirements. Um, and the idea is that, that people can, can come there and make their stuff using digital fabrication. So usually you start with a digital file and you, you create that. Um, our fab lab was um, founded in a, in a rather unusual way, that it was founded by a few um, Independent, independent people. Yeah. people. Um, one of which is is Armer, by the way. Um, and they, they they got together. They got some some money. Uh, it was it was Armer, Leo, uh, Ricompagna, um, Indiana, uh, Wilfred, um, and they started a web app and they tried to do that as as uh, well one of which is as cheap as possible. So they could actually do this um, and, and do this bottom up. Um, so one of our one of the things we do is, is we try to make stuff um, ourselves as much as possible. So, uh, one of which is the CNC mail that's in that room, um, and uh, most of the three D printers are, are they're from a, like a design, but we've made them ourselves. Um, yeah, and a lot of software is open source. So, so every machine here you can you can run with open source software, and we are probably the first one of the fab labs that do this this way. Um, and the idea of our fab lab is that you come here every Tuesday. You can come here and you um, you you put down 50 euros. And that's kind of a um, deposit that you can earn back by giving something back to the public. So you can, if you share your design, for example, you, you help the community, and then you get the money back. Or you uh, help out um, by hanging stuff up, or, or improving the fabric, or improving the manuals. Um, or of course you can you can leave the money when you um, give back. Financially, um, so that's a bit of a background of the fab labs. Um, and one of the projects um, that we have here, um, is a uh, large open source. It was started by uh, Peter Brier and um, uh, Jaap Maas in uh, 2010, I think. Um, it's it's um, 
was usually started with those machines, like the, the, the right um, laser cutters, small laser cutters, and they designed a custom board. Um, So part of it is, is this board, for example. This is, I think this is version 3. Um, and it, it has an embed and place for stepper motors or external stepper drivers. And the other part is, of course, the, the firmware that runs this board. And they are working on a, or not, not really hard, but on a printer driver, kind of, so that you can even print from Word you can, can send it to the, to the list cut. And grade your document in stone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I won't recommend uh, using the driver. Um, yeah, and there's a, there's a <laughs> display. Um, you can hang ten commandments on your wall. I <laughs> know. <laughs> <laughs> Or the charter. <laughs> and one of the things we have here, for example, is that the left laser cutter, so more depth, and it ran a commercial software which required uh, Windows, which we actually got for free from the Chinese, uh, hacked, <laughs> of course. Um, so we weren't really happy. Is it happy a Chinese company? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And there's a reseller in the Netherlands. Um, but we weren't really happy with the software and that it required Windows uh, because everything else ran uh, Linux here. Um, so we actually made a switch. Um, so that you can switch to open source. So we actually switch to another board that's also built in to the laser cutter. And then you can... Uh, you actually don't need a computer next to it. You can, you can control it wirelessly from your laptop using open source software. And it's running then open hardware. Um, and we we switched it by the way because of course everything is in development, so it's it's nice to have a fallback. Um, but one of the nice things is that you can start hacking the hardware. So we made this um, bottle cutter. It's basically a, a Z axis. Um, so you can cut patterns in, in, uh, in bottles. And one of our friends is an artist. He, uh, he wanted to do this. He used to do this by hand. So he, he said it would take one or two hours to do this by hand with a, with a knife. And now we can do this in, uh, in 15 minutes, I think, or probably less. Um, and then he can do this. So that the cutting is the first step, but then he has a process of melting it and blowing it up. And you can design. Oh, it's, it's not visible. Um, yeah, that's not really. So we can design stuff like this. These are lamps, for example. Um, you have an open hardware. Eh? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Not open. It's not open hardware. <laughs> um, I don't know. Do you guys want to go into the technical details? A lot. Uh, I, I guess there are questions about it, though. So, or yeah. How is the Z-axis controlled from software? Um, it's, a, it's a bit of a hack. We, um, we wanted to, to make the switching very easy. So we actually added the, the axis on the Z-axis. So these are, these are normal. This is the, the Y, this is the X. <coughs> and these have external uh, drivers that are in the laser cutter already. Um, and we added the, the, the z-axis on the z-axis, but we actually um, have a different firmware version um, that switches the pins so that 
the uh, machine thinks that the z axis is the y axis. So you can make a, a normal drawing. So, for example, the, the spiral is just a 2D spiral. And if you send it, it will uh, rotate the axis like it's the y axis. Oh, yeah. Like, so uh, instead of going yeah. over the, the board, the bus will slowly <coughs> place. Yeah, that's really close. The beam stays stationary and the bottle is moved. Yep. And, uh, it only moves the x-axis and the bottle is turning like it's the y. Yeah, so that's uh, this, this motor. Yeah, mm -hmm. it goes over it. So it makes a drawing for it very simple. Um, like, for example, if you, if you draw um, 57 millimeters high, that's, that's the 260 uh, degrees turn. So if you, you have to scale it down, and then you have 360 around the, the bottom. Um, and what's nice is that, that now you can um, compile this with, uh, with Embed, and it's, it's all open source. It used to be closed, and you had to go to an online thing with Embed to compile it. But now it's... Um, now it's a lot easier. And actually there, there are some bugs gone because <coughs> it's open now and probably people fix stuff. Um, yeah, I think that's that. Um, the way we control the laser cutter is, is using Physicut. That's a project by uh, Thomas Osler. He's from Germany. It was part of his thesis to make laser cutter easier. That's um, found. And this is also square, I think. Um, it is basically an open source software package. For on, on uh, Java, that everybody can install, and you can download the, the FabLab specific settings from a website, and then you can just select the, the big laser cutter and send something. Uh, yeah, so a bit of background, like. Um, how I'm involved with this kind of project is usually I, I, I try to make it more user friendly. So this is how I found it, um, when I got involved. And tweaking the design and helping out uh, the, the, the program, uh, we've managed to, to simplify it to this. So we got rid of a lot of separate windows and a lot of buttons that were not uh, needed or, or we're not supported by a lot of machines. Which, uh, do you know which widget set this is? Which widget set? Now the, the buttons and the set VX widgets or... I think it's swing. Yep. What, wing? Swing. Swing, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very not important. So, to, to talk a bit about that process, for example, this was the default design selection menu that you always saw. Um, but it takes a lot of space and, and it's hard to, to read, especially if you have a lot of those kind of interfaces at once. So we've managed to simplify it by making it gradually more complicated. It's also called progressive disclosure. So you basically start with this. And then when you have a file, it shows this. And only when you have multiple files, it will become this interface. Yeah. And uh, with that trick, we, we've managed to simplify the interface a lot. <coughs> and for example, this is one of the, the tricks you can do if you want to design this and test really easily. People understand it is using paper and pen. And, um, 
we, we actually pretend to be the computer and switch out when people press stuff. Um, and again, because it's open source, people can add new things. For example, this is a test pattern. So you can, um, Physicat can, Lasercut can have a script. So in sort of JavaScript, you can write a design. And because it's JavaScript, you can easily easily switch the power and the speed. Um, so you can de design, for example, a test pattern. So you don't have to guess or try and try and what's the best uh, speed and power for a material. One of the, the newer parts I'm, I'm working on is, is Physica. And the idea is that you um, get a preview of what you're laser cutting. Um, so Well, but now I can take a picture of, of the of the working area basically. So you don't normally you have to measure. Okay, my material is here, and it's it's like three centimeters from the left and uh, two from the top. But especially if you have weird materials or small materials, that's that's quite a hassle. <coughs> and the idea is now that there's a camera, and you can take a picture of the, the area, and then you can place your design over the material and you don't have to worry about the exact position. Is that a GoPro or something? Yeah. Existing uh, webcams because it's really hard to to uh, mount usually. Um, you, have, you, you have to break them apart, and, and it's hard to um, give people a, a design for that because they'll buy their own webcam. So I want to make something that people can uh, can install themselves. So I chose for for a Raspberry Pi with a with a camera. And the idea with uh, Physicam is that it finds these uh, markers at the edges of your, uh, normally they're here, and then it, it pulls it straight.
free, close the lid. So <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I would I would actually suggest trying it. Like, let's Great. see what we can make. I have some examples here of stuff that's been made here. Yeah. I want to know how accurate is it, uh, like the, the the photo and the actual cutting? Does it really match up? Um, no. <laughs> like no. But, um, is it more accurate near the front or something? Or uh, well, there's there's um, there's usually a slight mismatch in, in where it finds a difference in where it finds these markers. Uh huh. That will change. And uh, I believe it's it's like. It can be three millimeters off. Three millimeters. And, mm -hmm. and there's still a bug in, in the factorizing program. Mm Been uh, cutting bottles, the working area has moved, so I have to reconfigure the markers. So that's why they're a bit off. So you do have to calibrate the position of the markers first in order for this to work? Um, well, that, that's. No, you don't have to. That's At least they should be put in a square or a rectangle. Yeah, they, they have to be within a certain area, basically. As long as they're in that area, it should be okay. But how, how, how does Lars uh, Laser know the offset that it has to use for engraving the right area? Um, that's that's been calibrated. Okay. Yeah. But, but is that the calibration that you want for the position of your camera, or do you do the calibration uh, whenever you place your markers in a certain place? I'm not sure. Actually, it, it's still yeah, it's still rather new. So we haven't been experimented with with it that much. How can you uh, send? Uh, uh, can you send your design from your laptop to it? Yeah. Through a local address or something? Through an through a, an IP address? Yeah. So in principle, people could also through the internet uh, also send designs. To it. Yeah, be forward. Forward. Yeah. Forward yeah. Like that. That's okay. What we have. <laughs> Um, so here I have to um, adjust the place where it finds the markers. Looks like the whole camera has, has moved. Um, and here's basically that you can uh, select an area. And then uh, usually you want to factorize it because you want to laser cut it and, and that requires a uh, factor. Oh, cool. So that's this step. Yeah. It's made this really simple. You should prepare these other, uh, other interfaces. And then there's the bug. It, it actually fills the whole area that you take. So it, it's, you have to hmm. manually uh, adjust this. Still should be some manual work to it. Yeah. Otherwise, it's also easy. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can send it. Basically, now it's there. And I have to press uh, the start button there, and it starts. So uh, when you yeah, so when you go to to the Fablab website and 
you go to machines, big laser cutter, open, open ads here. Then you'll find the, the manual, how to do this. Um, and there's the, the download link for the settings, for example, and the software. And you can laser cut, basically. The basic idea is that, for example, red is cut, black is engraved, and blue is marked. And mark is just a very light cutting. It's just the different settings for, for the same thing. Yeah. How many percent is mark of cut? How many percent of power is? That's, that's what you would what you put here in, this, in, this in these settings? Default? I don't know what the default is. Ah, no, 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 I've, I've been, uh, I want to rebuild it, because it's very slow and I have to refine it. running on the Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Oh, this, so it, it looks uh, very big, but the, the hardware, the, the processing is uh, the Raspberry Pi inside. Um, only for the, for the image. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so only for that we have a Raspberry Pi now. This is a bit strange. And the actual laser cutter is controlled by an embed. Okay. 